Hi friends, praying to die. I don't know about you, but have you ever gone through a season of your life where you're praying to die? I know that sounds pretty dark, but um, sometimes we as individuals experience a great deal of darkness. And uh, all that seems to be left is, uh, Lord, just, just take me, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm ready, or I hope I'm ready, I, but I, I just can't deal with this, whatever this is. Uh, this time of my life, this crisis, this person, this, this loss, uh, this suffering, we just pray to die. I hear that a lot from uh, older people when I visit them in nursing homes. I'm just praying for the Lord to take me, Father, so I'm just waiting for the Lord to take me. What to do with that? Well, there's many scripture passages that deal with this issue, but I want to deal with one that maybe we don't think of readily, and that is um, the book of Tobit, and in a particular way, chapter 3 of the book of Tobit. But let me first like, give you a little bit of the, 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 the Jewish context and the background to Tobit. So, Tobit lives during the time of the Assyrian exile. When is that? Oh, about the 8th century BC. And what has happened is that the people of God, God's people, Israel, have been unfaithful time and time again to the covenant. And the end result is, well, not God punishing them. The Jews see it as that, but it's, it's really more the consequences of their own actions. He begs them not to... Uh, build an alliance with Assyria that they're just going to come in and make them a vassal state and, and carry away a lot of their good people into exile. And they, they didn't want to trust in God and his ways. They wanted to trust in their own ways and political alliances and ways of the world and so on. So that's exactly what ends up happening. They're, 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 they're put into exile. Tobit is one of those people in exile. But he's done remarkably well. So he's in Assyria. He's, in fact, in the capital of Assyria, which is Nineveh. And he has um, he's become a good businessman, I guess is the best way to say it. And he is uh, pretty wealthy. Things are going well for him. It's not just uh, economic prosperity. He is a good man. He, he truly is trying to follow in the Jewish ways and be faithful to the covenant, even though he's a long way away from home in the temple. For instance, he is a man that cares for others in need, and he's known for performing the corporal works of mercy, like finding a dead person on the streets and no one's doing anything with the body, and he will go and bury that body. He's very generous with his time and with his money. So what happens to him? Something terrible happens to him. Something weird happens to him. He is resting after performing a good work, and um, he has his eyes closed, and a bird poops on his eyes. And he goes, he, he develops cataracts and can't see. So now all seems to be lost to him because he doesn't have a way to make a living and there is no social welfare system at this time. So he, he's just thinking, my, my life is done. I, I, I can't make a living. I, 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 I can't make money. I, I can't see what I'm doing. I, I can't help others. I, I, I can't run my business. You know, and, and just a host of negative thoughts come to him. In the midst of this great loss, that's going to have a, and is having a, a devastating effect upon his life, he slips into depression. As we could imagine, could happen to any of us. Something very human happens to him. He slips into depression and, and into spiritual desolation. So much to the point where he is praying to God that the Lord take his life, that the Lord have mercy upon him. But what he doesn't do and this is the part we need to pay attention to, I think. As he doesn't blame God. I think 
that's the temptation that any of us can fall into. Is when um, things in our life which are going well, all of a sudden are not going well. And we lose loved ones, or we lose our job, or our house, or our health, or uh, any number of bad things happen to us. We might be inclined to blame God. And here's the reason why. Because I'm a good person, God. Because here's what all the things I do, uh, because I'm a Christian, that I do for other people, how I help them, how I'm generous, how I, people who are in need I take care of, I, I don't forget the poor, and so on. Whatever that litany is inside of our head, we could be inclined to list that off. Just like Tobit could have, it's understandable, when things go south for him, he could have raised his fist to God and said, this is what I get for being a faithful Jew? This is what I get for helping out other people. This is what I get for and just listing off all the good works that he does. But he doesn't do that. In fact, what he sees is that, Lord, first of all, I know that we're in exile because of our own faults. We were faithless to you. We were interested in everything else other than you, going about our days and in our contracts rather than the one contract, the covenant, with you. So I, I get that. I, I get why this is happening. And, and he says, and I'm a sinner too, just like anybody else. And what he was getting at is that I don't, you don't owe me anything, God, and I owe you everything. And that's something sometimes that we forget. Like, Think about the greatest thing that God did for us that we can never pay back. Even if we lived a thousand lifetimes, we can never pay back that God sent his son to die upon a cross, not only to save us from our sins, but in order to get us into heaven, something that we could never do on our own. So when we start to think in the midst of darkness, in the midst of loss, in the midst of trials and tribulation in our lives, that God owes us something, because of the good people that we are. It'd be good and sobering to pick up the book of Tobit and remember that God doesn't owe us anything. In fact, we owe him everything. And that's the context out of which uh, Tobit prays. Now, first of all, he prays that the Lord simply has mercy upon him and, and rescues him from uh, his despair and just takes his life so he doesn't have to deal with all the problems of his life. Now, God in his mercy could have answered that prayer, but God always has a better way of answering our prayers. Always is able to give us more than what we're asking for. So I'm going to, I want to come back to that, but I, I, I want to stay within chapter 3 of Tobit and go to a completely different person. And that's Rockwell's daughter, Sarah. So Sarah is this young maiden who also is living in exile and is a kin's person, a distant relative. Uh, they were all part of the same tribe, so they saw themselves as kinsfolk. And um, she's a beautiful young maiden. And what has happened to her is that uh, a demon is oppressing her. And we'll, in, in, in another talk, I'll talk about that, what that really is. But a demon is oppressing her. And so she is given away to her first husband in marriage. And the night that they uh, are married, they're, they're going to go into the marriage bed and consummate their relationship. Now, you got to remember, this time, the culture back then is not the, you know, the, the culture that we deal with now. Or the culture that we're dealing with now is not the culture back then. So there wasn't these casual hookups and, and one night stands and, you know, you date one time or a few times and then you're in bed with one another. No, it, it happened after marriage. And so um, she gets married and her husband dies before they consummate the relationship. And then she's married again and again, seven husbands in a row and all of them. Uh, due to what is going on uh, with this oppression of this demon, um, th they all die. And so now Sarah, you can understand again, is 
in depression and she's in desolation. And, and one step further than Tobit, she's contemplating taking her own life, committing suicide. But then she starts to think about her father and what shame this would br bring to him. Because that's what happened in that culture. Uh, if a family member commits suicide, then uh, it's not just uh, that person's tragedy, but the whole family experiences the shame of that, especially the parents or the spouse. And so out of love, out of love for her father and mercy for her father, she's like, no, I, I can't do this. And so she, like Tobit then, prays, Lord, just have mercy upon me. Lord, just, just take my life. Please take my life. And the Lord, again, could have had mercy upon this young, beautiful maiden in the way that she asked, but he, won, he does one better than that. What is that? Well, you know, I mean, you can read the book of Tobit yourself, but I'll just go right to it. At the end of chapter 3, what happens is, is that God answers Tobit's prayer, but in a beautiful way. He sends his angel, his archangel, uh, Raphael. And Raphael heals the eyes of Tobit. But not just that, then. He has his son, Tobiah, by Raphael, guided by Raphael, sent to Sarah. And Ra Tobiah marries Sarah. And uh, they have this beautiful wedding and a beautiful um, marital embrace. It really is... If you'll read the other chapters, it, it, it's a love story. My point is, is this, is that, yes, there are times in which we go through darkness. And we may pray, uh, Lord, just take my life. And we may even get to the point where we're contemplating taking our own life. But God in his mercies is able to answer our prayers and so much more than we could ever find the answers on our own or that we could ask God to do for us if we trust in him. And that was, that was Tobit and that was Sarah, is that they just kind of took all their problems and took it out of their hands and put it in the lap of God and to say, you take care of it. This is what we think is best. But we trust in you. We, 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 we ask for your mercies. And, and we know that you know what's best. And of course, God does know what's best. And God came up with a plan for their life. For, uh, for Tobit, Tobit's healing. And also his concern for his son, to, Tobiah. And also for a woman had nothing really to do with Tobit's life and how that same angel who healed Tobit brought Tobiah and Sarah together into a beautiful married life. For me, you know, I don't know about you, but uh, there's been a couple of times in my life as a priest that I've experienced a, a deep darkness. And even as a priest, I remember thinking to myself in the midst of that darkness, when things were just blackest in my life, Lord, just, just take my life. I'm, I, I'm ready. I didn't ever think about taking my own life. Uh, but I, I, I prayed for God's mercy, and I, and I prayed, Lord, I, 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 I'm ready. You know, I think I'm ready, but you know if I'm ready. And so even though I, I know heaven would just be so much better than the, the crap I'm in right now, um, I trust in you. So please, Lord, have mercy upon me. And, and God did, not by taking my life, uh, bringing me to heaven, but by surrounding me with some beautiful people in my life who really just loved upon me and cared for me and, and reminded me of... Um, my worth and strengthened me and protected me and prayed for me and, um, and things got better in my life and in fact it was it was beautiful because in the midst of all that struggle the Lord um, 
strengthen me and um, help me to rely upon him more than I ever had be been before and help me to cry out to him more than I ever had before as Savior and as Lord and as my God and as my King and, and as the lover of my life. And um, it made me stronger as a priest, better as a priest, and better equipped <laughs> to deal with um, other challenges in my life that would come later. And I'm more empathetic to people who have come to me as a priest at, at the brink of despair and be able to understand what that feels like and to walk with them and love them and to remind them just to surrender all this to the Lord and the Lord has a plan for their life. God answered the prayer so much richer and fuller than me just simply trying to escape life. That's our God. So I don't know if you've ever had those experiences and maybe someday you'll have that season of life where you experience darkness and you're just like, Lord, just take my life. In the midst of that, remember Toby. Remember Sarah. Uh, remember a priest like me. Remember to pray, but God, you know what's best. I, I trust in you and I surrender the situation, whatever that situation is. I surrender to you. Have mercy upon me and answer the prayer the way you know best. And he will. Pray that prayer often. Pray it every day, sometimes multiple times a day. And the Lord will answer the prayer in a beautiful way. And uh, uh, that darkness and that struggle that you're experiencing, the Lord will transform you in the midst of that. That will not only bless your life, but bless the life of so many other people. And people that you don't even know, uh, the Lord will connect you to. And what I did for you, God will say, now go and do for others. Till next time, friends.